It's spoiler in time. This is a show where we take all the hard work we do on our other show, Cord Killers, about how to watch things, then watch them and talk about them here. Uh, we're going to talk about Hannibal season three, episodes nine and 10, Rick and Morty season five, episode six, and Ted Lasso season two, The Return season two, episode one. I'm Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. Yeah, dude. Uh, also joining us for all three reviews will be one Meryl Barr. Uh, and so How I guess doing? now that we have a feast laid out, what dish do we jump in on first? But also, who jumps on dishes? That's very rude to the yeah. chef. That's a thing Ted Lasso might say. So let's start with Ted Lasso, season two, episode one. I'm a goldfish. What happened last season? I don't remember. Uh, Tom, can I tell you something strange that happened watching this? And 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 yes. before Meryl says it, yes, we know Meryl's seen he's Hollywood, so he's seen previous. Put a pin in that, Meryl. Um, I left a social engagement early. Uh, uh, with uh, a, a whiskey tasting event early on Friday so that our family could gather around and watch uh, uh, Ted Lasso uh, season two, episode one, which our whole family enjoyed all of season one of. And um, uh, I was hearing a bunch of good things being said about it. And I'm like, huh, I didn't have a great time watching it. And I was like, what happened? And then I loaded it up and gave it a second watch. And I realized, oh, that's right. My very, my daughter, who's very sensitive to injury to animals, screamed angrily nonstop the entire half hour long, which reminded me of two things. Apparently when somebody's screaming, it's hard to enjoy a comedy. Also, those episodes are shorter than I remember them being because, uh, and, and which all of which is to bring me to, and eventually I'll give my real review upon my second viewing. But, but I am dreadfully worried that because we're not binging this, we're going to feel different about it. Ah. This week over week experience. I, I don't know how it's going to sit. I don't know how it's going to feel. I'm worried. Uh, that's the kind of thing that will psych you in and out of things uh, is my opinion. Like if you think about it, then it will more likely bother you. I, I watched Ted Lasso, uh, in spurts. I watched the first two episodes week to week. Then I fell off and I caught up, I don't know, episode five or six binged until I caught up. And then once I was caught up, I was dying, but I still enjoyed every week thereafter. So I kind of experienced it both ways in season one. Uh, and I still loved it. This episode, I, I, my, my review is going to sound just plain wrong, given what you just said, but I watched it and thought, no, they're not going to kill the dog. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they killed the dog. And I immediately was like, if I'm Ted Lasso and you're like, I'm the most beloved character, everything's super positive. What is the worst thing I could do and try to get away with it? in episode one, right off the bat, very first thing, like, oh, kill a dog. Uh, as a dog lover, dog owner, uh, when I see pets harmed in, in shows, I am guilty of feeling worse about that than I feel when I see humans harmed in shows. Uh, I usually am the, the, the screaming child of Brian Brushwood at those things. I do not like them. Uh, and I only want to see revenge taken against people who harm animals, even if it's fictional. I thought they got away with it. I was like, they didn't show it to me. Everyone was properly sad. Uh, and it worked. I was like, and it, and Danny felt horrible about it. So I'm like, Oh, but I like Danny. I don't, I mean, it wasn't his fault. Like I was, I was forgiving it. And I was like, man, they pulled it off. They pulled it off. They were able to have the most beloved positive show on television, kill a dog and make me not be angry about it. Uh, but then, of course, I'm not your dog. Uh, before before I turn it over to Meryl, um, the I, I actually called Bonnie uh, an hour before we started, saying, "Hey, uh, tonight you should rewatch that episode because it's really brilliant." Um, number one, they don't show the dog getting killed; it's done by implication. You already uh, pre feel bad about it. Uh, that monologue of how Ted answers the question about Perfectly the dog Ted Lasso, right? was was supernatural like 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 get yourself your first starring role awesome monologue like if if i if i was 22 i'd memorize every word of that and that would be my my <laughs> attempt to get hired from then on um uh they also do a good job of paying out the 
whatever happened to's in a good enough way. Uh, Roy Kent, where he has ended up, um, uh, for the setup that we got, it was a fairly unsurprising reveal. Uh, 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 for, for, for Jamie Tart, uh, that was a surprise. I, I enjoyed it that. Um, the, it, it was a bit of a surprise that uh, What's-Her-Name is dating somebody else, uh, but she has that realization of, oh, we're going to we're going to reboot and restart the romantic quest. Um, and, 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 and which, you know, suggests to me later in the season, there will almost certainly be romantic complications where Ted's ex wants to reconcile or something like that. Uh, we'll, and, and, we'll, and Roy we'll Kent's role in this episode is to kick off that quest for Rebecca by pointing out that she's better than that. Right. Well, and, and not only that, but also there's, there's another courtship that's going to happen, which is we all know we want to see Roy Kent come back to the team as a coach. And, mm -hmm. and we're waiting for that. Uh, similarly, they set up, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, who is timid in season one being, uh, oh, Nate. Yeah. Nate, Nate's doing too much roasting, it's 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 all like um, uh, this was all fine place setting. Uh, I wish I had heard most of it the first time I watched it. <laughs> I'm glad I watched it a second time. I'm very worried about having to wait week after week for each little slice of this. We we also got introduced to the or just barely introduced to the psychiatrist or the sports uh, psychologist. That and, oh right, and, the and, foil and the, for Ted, the Dutch right. douche. Uh, I, in fact, if I had a criticism about this episode, it's that. Uh, there's a little too much typical Ted and everybody loves Ted and nothing's bad about Ted. And then they introduce the sports psychologist who's not impressed by Ted at all. Or, or that. anyone. I mean, she, yeah. she doesn't seem to give any energy back to, and you know, and, and then they, they do a fine black box mystery of like, what's her voodoo inside the room. All, all we get is that, you know, she, you know, I, I am looking forward to seeing that mystery revealed. Meryl, what'd you think? Okay. <laughs> um, the, okay. The, Brian, you're right. This episode feels like a lot of really good play, like table setting, right? The nice appetizer before the meal kicks off. It's a great uh, reintroduction to the world. The one thing I think, because I was back and forth on the dog thing, I, and there's a world where I could see that it natively came out of the writer's room. Like, what's the worst thing that could happen that we, like, what's, how can we write ourselves into a corner that we have to get? out of with ted's positivity like uh the other thing world i can see and there's i don't know if this is the case but it feels like a thing is this season was written before season one came out and it feels like a situation where an executive goes look i get you've been doing this whole positivity thing but we need some shock value like we need like kill the dog kill a dog for me like we need shock value coming out of season two we like with these streaming shows they don't do that well like they do they kind of pop and then they're going to go away for a year and a half and i think whatever executive may have said that if that is the story and i'm really i'm genuinely saying i don't know but it feels like it could have gone that way um and if that's the case they wrote themselves out of it brilliantly um but I also see a world where they're like, what, how can we really write ourselves oh, into a I, corner? And I think I, they I, my theory was the lineage of this was we need to introduce the sports psychologist. Why is she there? Well, she has to fix somebody. Who's the least likely person to fix? Danny. Right. Danny is the happiest person. How do we make Danny not be the happiest person? What breaks Danny of all people? Uh, and that's the challenge they set themselves first. Right. And then they're like, we kill a dog. Uh, and, and then that's where that all comes from. So you may be right. It may be an executive coming down and like, that wasn't a big enough way to break Danny, make it bigger. Uh, but, but I could also see it the other way. Yeah, I, 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 I will say, both ways. I will say my favorite throwaway joke that they, that they, they don't drive home at all. And if you noticed, you noticed and you enjoyed it is when he wakes up from his nightmare, uh, he's in bed with two women. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. Football is dead. <laughs> and then they don't wake up. They just stay asleep. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And they sleep through They're like, it. yeah, he is always yelling. But uh, yeah, I love I, all the things that it's setting up for this season. And I would say, and this is the only thing I'll say with my privilege of having seen more episodes, don't worry. 
like you're going to feel very you're going to watch the sh- the season compound oh, you're, and you're, you're talking about like uh, if if not binging it is going to damage my right yeah. experience you're, you will have a you're going to be genuinely happy that so, you're watching week over week Br- bryce got a uniquely special experience and that oh you, yeah you you got to come in with the momentum of having just <laughs> you know, I, I didn't finish season one last year and so i binged a bunch of the climactic saddest stuff in season one <laughs> and then roll right into season two. And it made me, it, it did make me feel like season uh, two's premiere was maybe a little forgettable only because it didn't make me cry as many times yeah, as yeah. the other ones. But I, 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 I really like that. They pushed us forward, pushed us to the next season. We don't even get into any of the complications of being relegated in football at all. Just, they are now a champion league team. Nobody is talking about it. We're in the, with, the season's well, half over in a row yeah seven, seven like, ties eight with yeah, with, the, yeah that's the weird thing it was kind yeah. of lost in the background of this episode but like he's ever tied that many times in a row <laughs> so they've they've said the challenge isn't oh no we're gonna get relegated the challenge uh that they set up in this first episode is we keep tying. Uh, are they ever we gonna win, win? Yeah. Like, yeah or lose uh a game uh, and and also uh, i also agree with you bryce you not even not having re-binged uh, that this episode felt a little flatter, but I had to remind myself like, well, except for that Roy Kent part where he's like cursing at the little kids. That was kind of funny. Well, except for that part where uh, Ted is, you know, uh, not impressing the psychologist. That was an interesting part. Well, except for the part where they break Danny. Well, except, and I'm like, oh, what they did was they didn't try to make the best Ted Lasso episode ever. They left themselves room to grow for the rest of the season. And so, yeah, this isn't the episode that, that shows you something new yet. It just shows you good hits. You get a great Ted monologue. You get a really funny, unexpected twist. Yeah. Uh, all of that stuff. And, and like we've said multiple times now, it's table setting. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, from the way you describe your experience watching Bryce, that means mm. that you got to go straight into season uh, two, episode one, after Ted Lasso literally gives a writer's room pitch for it's like, <laughs> well, this season we got knocked down. Next time we just have to win the Champions League and go back. <laughs> then we got to win the whole thing. That's three seasons. Yeah. <laughs> like Which, like, by the way, you can't, I don't think you can do if you tie seven. I don't think there's a world where you can win anything if you tie seven times like that. Uh, I, uh, I guess man, I don't know enough about English yeah, football. Uh, football's pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> they make it pretty clear. Well, the other, the other thing you should know about English football is there are other things to win, right? There's, we just we just heard about the UEFA Cup, uh, which is a national team, but there are also tournaments that involve the actual regular teams. Uh, imagine if the NFL was like, oh, yeah, you can go compete in other tournaments when you're not playing NFL games. Uh, For- so. so- you know, there's there's that that kind of stuff to to work into the milieu for as the, well. For the for the uh, for the for the football illiterate um, question, what is the highest championship they can earn in world, this world league? Cup. It's not the World Cup, right? Is it the World Cup? Yeah. Well, they're, they're, yes, but that's for national teams. Uh, so the highest championship you can you win is the World Cup, but the highest championship that a private team like FC Richmond could win. That's what I'm would, asking. Like would be the champions league, uh, which is where the, the best teams in Europe come together and play each other in a tournament. So that would be like the big series finale win is that championship. There's not like a, there's not a world where they're going to go to the world cup in this show. Although I don't think you can qualify for the champions league out of uh out of the division that they're in uh well because they're in there's the, the, F- the championship there's the FA league, cup right there's the champions league is is all of the best teams in europe the fa cup is all the best teams in england uh but and i think they could take part in that uh by the way three seasons and a movie the movie is when our four favorite characters you know pair up with a bunch of misfits to take on the world cup and <laughs> oh yeah if ted lasso gets named as the coach of the english world cup team right and he has to lead england to their first world cup since the 1950s mm-hmm. right 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 yeah okay, wow. I'm in for that. that's kind of amazing i love that all right th- anything else on ted lasso no nope. i'm very excited Ma- to mainly see happy just react. nervous Let's talk about Rick and Morty's Thanksploitation Spectacular. Uh, that would also be known as Rick and Morty Season 5, Episode 6. Uh, a 
a Thanksgiving episode in July. So, Tom, last time we spoke about Rick and Morty, we had two episodes in a row that I was fairly disappointed in that it was all surface level, level gross jokes or whatever. Um, right. And then last week we were, Bryce and I were both talking like, man, I wish Brian was, was here this week because it felt like maybe this was, that was a better one for you. It last was, week. I loved it. I loved it so much. It was, I, 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 I it was one I uh, tried to get my wife to watch. I definitely rewatched it uh, twice afterwards. One time with my 13 year old daughter. This is another one of those. This one is freaking amazing. It's, uh, uh, I, I loved it because there's a, there's a deeper story. Uh, uh, we're talking about the, the, uh, it's, it's, it's the trapped in an elevator episode. The president and Rick hate each other. They're trapped in an elevator. Uh, they have to fight their way out by killing a bunch of Turkey Marines. It's great. I love everything about it. Everything landed. It was fun. And it felt like it progressed the meta narrative in a very, uh, significant way that I liked a lot. Meryl, it's Thanksgiving in July. I really liked this episode. It was really fun. Uh, I but I I the I look overall. I've been disagreeing with you guys because I think every episode's been I, my least favorite was actually the first episode of the season. But all the weird non sequitur stuff they've been doing this season has been nothing but joyful for me. Uh, and this episode is right on par with like I feel like they've been firing and on all cylinders and having a re doing a lot of really interesting stuff. And I won't reveal it, but there's a theory going around about this season that if true. And I think if there's a world where it really could be, uh, it's everything's going to pay off in such a unique way. And this episode just goes further into that. I, I, I have heard the theory. Um, I, uh, uh, there, there's a saying in skepticism, when you hear hoof beats over the horizon, think horses, not unicorns. And I think that theory arose because People were disappointed with the same two episodes I was disappointed with, and they were desperately trying to invent unicorns. But now, having seen a couple of good episodes in a row, I'm back to thinking those are just horses. Well, and and mm -hmm. also, uh, mm, mm, uh, mm, never mind. I'm gonna not say. Oh yeah, it's, <laughs> no, it's, no, it's no, hard because it's related uh, to episode uh, seven, isn't it? <laughs> uh, y yes, uh, episode seven ah, was the one I accidentally okay. watched okay. last week. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, if anyone is, is has not been following along, uh, uh, <laughs> Bryce, uh, through an accident of travel, uh, was able to watch episode seven. Oops! Uh, two 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 weeks ahead of time. Also, Bryce, yeah. have you uh, so. have you uh, copyrighted your transportation technology? Uh, this is person. That's a person. That's HIPAA. That's HIPAA. You can't ask me that. That's HIPAA. <laughs> that's uh, HIPAA. But I I can see where hey, if you if maybe like me two weeks ago you accidentally saw episode seven um you might think that there's a theory like that and i might think that there's a very small version of that theory i'm not quite sure Here, here's i don't know tangential to this mm. i watched this episode and enjoyed it very much i was like ah great rick and morty shenanigans great rick and morty jokes uh great yeah uh, elevator uh, uh plot with lots of you know blockbuster movie allusions and everything uh i also watched as many little like uh oh what was that thing written in the side oh what what what, what was that uh you know illusion in the in the corner and thought you know i don't care that's too much work i just want to enjoy the rick and morty i, I don't need to read the metaverse so if there's something that pays off later this this season that's like well if you were paying close attention this will all make sense i'll actually be disappointed because i you know what i just want to watch rick and morty i don't, I don't want to have to write a doctoral thesis yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely going to watch this one again as soon as I get home with Josie. <laughs> it, it, it was a great. magnifying it's, glass. It's, it's, yeah, it's, write down all the clues. Yeah. No, it's no, no. Really... I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it for the fact that I like this more than I like National Treasure. So. <laughs> Ouch. That was the best. The, the National Treasure opening. Wow. Well, yeah, they don't even need hitting, hitting, hitting the, the Statue of Liberty and releasing the, the French. <laughs> Which is also a side plot that they allude to later. Like, yeah, yeah, nobody's worried about that. A certain New, New York, York is gone. Trump. France took New York. I'm busy being a turkey I right sold, now. I sold New York. <laughs> and <laughs> all of you get a raise. And gave Congress a raise. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it. it's, it's a like, recipe for running a democracy. I'm sure it's available online. <laughs> I love when the I love when Turkey president is like, I am presenting you with Sophie's choice, and you're gonna have to pick which one you want to do: save the save the world or fight me. And he's like, We can do both. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got two spacemen here. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All right. That is Rick and Morty uh, season five, episode six. Let's talk about Hannibal season three, episode nine and 10, uh, where we are, we are getting back into the, the world of, of really odd names uh, and the woman clothed with the sun and the woman clothed in sun are these two oh. episodes. Uh, and they do kind of go right together where we, we are just now following serial killer Francis Dollarhide and Will's attempt to catch him using Hannibal uh, dangerously as his assistants because he knows that that Hannibal has the key to unlocking the killer inside Will. Is is this? I I never watched or read Red Dragon. Uh, is this just straight up a television reinterpretation of of that story? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, it, it, the the uh, the plan idea the idea was that from here they were going to start doing the books. And so had they and, gone and, to and Bryce, four, you they... were really excited about that. I remember. Yeah, I thought that that's. Uh, I, I think I talked about this last week, but I think that's. Uh, I see the math that goes into it, right? Like like you just said, Mara. Like we'll just do the books. Cool. We can now. Great. We've built a Hannibal verse, right? And you work around Clarice, or you don't, but. Uh, then you have a format for introducing new serial killers and working with Hannibal Lecter. That's not just how do we make how do we make another season where we chase Hannibal Lecter? We can't do that forever. Well, that would have been like that is like the second book is Hannibal is now escaped and they have to go find Hannibal. Well, well, but it's but but it's not the first. That's not a hundred episodes franchise that you're building. That's a that's an that's a story arc yes. in yeah, yeah, in yeah, a longer yeah. thing. Um. Yeah, I wasn't there last week, but uh, 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 I was very, very happy that they ended the monster mash and 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 started literally anything new. I'm not I'm not crazy about the Red Dragon arc um, because I don't understand enough about what makes him an interesting character. I do understand that they full on press the hard reset button, and I would argue that they did it in a fairly clumsy way. Um, but at least it's reset and we're not seeing the monster mash anymore because I was not. I, it. I would, I would be question... clumsy. I would say destructive. They just, they just were like, Oh, uh, Hannibal goes to jail and it's three years later. Boom. Right. It's uh, well, it's, 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 it's like that moment in, I think you should leave when it's baby of the year. And, and then the, the, the sketch gets too far in its own tail. And he's like, all right, cut it, cut it. This one's garbage next. And then it goes to the next the, sketch. That's what they the did. The question you have to ask is like, do you, is there anything in those three years you would have wanted to see? Do you want to see the trial of Hannibal Lecter? I don't. Like I yeah, he's captured. Yep, we're going now. We're going to start the uh, the the arc. Everyone knows. No, no, no. Like, my 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 complaint is uh, why why did we go to Italy and and construct an undo? Why did we spend so much time doing yeah, that thing? Right. That thing why is cool. We just go straight like, like it's just spend... start with a time jump. And then just go straight to Red Dragon. Why didn't we do that? Or, yeah. or it's just no, my complaint there's isn't nothing about we the got out of that wasted time. I, in fact, yeah. I don't even have a complaint. I'm just like, uh, man, I'm so glad that we're not doing Twin Peaks meets Hannibal anymore. I, <laughs> as much as I love Twin Peaks. Um, I will like I think I think it's more like it's they it's I think it's less that they they bailed on Italy and more understood early that if they tried to stretch Red Dragon in 13 episodes, you guys would have been equally as pissed. So they'd rather just be like, let's push Wed Dragon off to the back half of the season and just make the first half of the season the cat and mouse and, you know, whatever happens, happens there because we're going to do a hard reset right in the middle anyway. I'll, well, look I'll how it worked out for him. I'll have to go, yeah, I'll have to go back and look at the synopses again, but I cannot think of a single thing I uh, that, 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 that was of true value from going to Italy or following any of that or the monster mash or any of that. Like, it seems like they could have gone straight to red dragon. My, my gut feeling, my emotional reaction to these last three episodes really, but, but, but I thought it when I was watching these two is, Oh, Hannibal's back. This, mm -hmm. this feels like seasons one and two mm -hmm. different stories. Mm -hmm. It's better stories maybe. Uh, but I'm like, Oh, we're back to watching Hannibal instead of, uh, instead of uh, film school uh, I, things. I take back my comment now that I realize that uh, season two definitely ended with him getting away. And I guess you do have to show him getting captured if you want him to be in a cage. Um, yes. Yeah, although it even then, I would have preferred the to... chase of Hannibal. It's the way they told it 
I found a little tedious. Yeah. I think if you shave three episodes off the Maybe. Ill- 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 a ten episode season, you guys feel different. Yes, I'll yeah. eat those episodes. I mean, yeah, all that Verger, Verger stuff <laughs> went nowhere. He died. <laughs> For no reason. I mean, but I would, was the one paying the bills. I, I, I said a lot I mean, of really no, gross ideas. I would love to be permanent wrong, but it seems that's to me that another, he got killed by an eel. This now, goes back to now where here's like an ad were, for Dawn Soap. They were trying to have their cake. <laughs> they were trying to have their cake and eat it too, because it's like technically Mason doesn't exist until the second book, and they were trying to bring him in because he has a whole arc with clarice and chasing hannibal and it's a whole thing and it's like mm. they they're like well let's pull that element and put it earlier in the series and it's by doing that it's just it's just they were trying to they were trying, trying to, to have their hannibal and eat yeah. him too yes yes yeah. <laughs> my as only as, regret as, is i didn't get to talk about the important or christmas as far as these How do I support really... my family well i wish i was never born I'm Jimmy Stewart. That's a kind hey, Brian, what would happen if Mason Verger met T Tiki Texas? Oh my goodness. They would <laughs> uh, they would fight to the death and then T Tiki Texas would not be so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> um so the thing about these episodes and really the the last three episodes overall, um, it's a really nice first act, right? It's a really nice setup, I think. And especially if you're binging it, it really feels like a nice setup. But now then you get to the end of episode 10 and it's like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Cat and mouse game. They've seen each other. Now I think you're going to get into like some really exciting stuff. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, it's I the thing I am excited. Mm, uh, the thing I'm excited about is in, I believe, in episode 10 where uh, Francis uh, and Hannibal just talk like they know each other and they get on a level, which is kind of the inciting incident from season one right of hannibal calling ahead hey they're coming for you um and so we've got that that's the chaos right that's the little packet of of chaos that we needed in there so it seems like hannibal's helping but also hannibal's kind of got a little connection on the background right uh uh, we're 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 seeing a a little bit of his ace in the hole that that he's been holding on to this whole time and as we see it unfold, uh, and that part I, I have enjoyed very, very much. I, and 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 what we are getting to experience is one of Hannibal's superpowers is he's never really in a cage. Right. Uh, he he's he's in a cage if he wants to be in a cage, but he can he can do he he considers himself smart enough to do anything he needs to do, no matter what his circumstances are. And you're watching that play out. That's exciting. Uh, when I when I make fun of the film school aspect of the early part of the season, it's because I just think it was unnecessary. Not that I think it's bad. What I love about this is we're now using those talents from early in the season for storytelling. Uh, and so you get those those interesting juxtapositions where you see what I would imagine would be Hannibal's imagination of the scene where he's just in his old office uh, talking to Will. And then you you know juxtapose that with the reality of the plastic uh, and all of that, and uh, it's great. I'm I'm really enjoying these last couple episodes, uh, to be honest. Yeah. Anything else on Hannibal? Uh, uh, no, I'm really. Ex- these I'm two really have been the see. best episodes of the whole season. Uh, uh, Would you say they're tasty? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't have a tongue anymore, Tom. Uh, <laughs> but one thing that did surprise. I guess I don't remember enough of the information from the books, but. Uh, they they mentioned that Hannibal is locked up by way of Alana. Uh, that it doesn't seem I mean, she's running the she's running the asylum now. She's running she the ho- the, the hospital now. Oh, so she How has did... the keys in that. Oh, that's right. She says there there are five doors, and she, I have all of the. And keys. she says I have all yeah. the keys. Okay, I didn't realize. Okay, I guess I, I don't just, know that that's it... literally like she has the keys. I think it's more yeah. like. You know, she she runs the hospital now. In the past three years, she got herself in charge of the hospital because she doesn't trust anyone else to keep Hannibal behind bars. I see. I ca- in my head, she was still kind of the the kick ass girl boss private investigator from the first half of the season. Yeah, um, I know. Well, the time jump does strange things. It's a really jarring time jump. Like I'll give you that. Like it's a very jarring time jump with a lot of moving parts. That is Hannibal season three episodes nine and ten. Uh, Meryl Barr, thanks for being with us. Uh, remind folks where they can like find always. what's going on with you. You can find me and doing all the things over at twitter.com slash Meryl Barr, M E R R I L L B A R R. And don't forget, folks, we will be back next week. Uh, we'll be talking about Ted Lasso episode two. 
We'll be talking about Hannibal 11 and 12, uh, bringing us right up to the penultimate episode of Hannibal. And we'll be talking about Rick and Morty episode seven, the one Bryce saw. Until next time, we'll spoil you then. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs) 